Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my blitz game number 838. Um, I had the white pieces and started off with d4. My opponent went d5. I go c4, the queen's gambit, and he declines the queen's gambit, playing the unusual move bishop to f5. Now this is known as the Baltic defense. Um, I played with the kind of natural move knight to f3. Um, this has the idea of uh, stopping any counterplay with uh, e5, so you put some immediate pressure on the center with a move like that. Well, you're not putting pressure on the center, but you're preventing um, black from taking more space on the center. Um, you could consider trying to uh, refute this directly. Uh, this is not the most popular opening, and it has some of the same flaws as the martial gambit, um, or the martial defense to the queen's gambit declined, um, which is that uh, white gets a lead in development. But in this case, um, I don't know. Well, let, let's take a look at this funny line here that's in the opening book. Um, black doesn't take the pawn back immediately. The idea would be if, if white, if black does take the pawn, then you get knight c3 in with a tempo on the queen, and you have a pleasant uh, development aid, edge. You're even going to get in the move uh, e4, hitting the bishop. So, uh, so instead of um, taking back the pawn immediately, your bishop takes b1 is played. And it puts an end to that uh, knight c3 idea. And then uh, white can take the rook, uh, take the bishop back or throw in this uh, queen a4 check. And, um, and black can block with c6 or queen d7. I'll show the queen d7 line. I just thought this was kind of interesting. You have to keep taking because um, otherwise you're not going to get your piece back. And then, uh, then you can grab the bishop. And then black plays knight to f6. And what this means is that... Uh, well, black is preventing the immediate uh, e4, so that uh, this pawn, um, black is going to be able to recoup the pawn. So the material will be even, um, and the development is also about even. White will have two advantages, though. White will have the advantage of the bishop pair, and uh, white will have an extra center pawn. So this is a good position for white. Not, not winning, but uh, a nice pleasant edge to white, but you have to be willing to play a, uh, a long game without queens. <laughs> so uh, anyway, that, that's one way that it might go if you try to directly refute it with uh, c takes d5. So knight f3 is a nice uh, alternative, you know, keeping the pieces on, and it also leads to a pleasant edge for uh, white. Let's see, he goes e6, defending now, and um, then I played the immediate queen b3. I, I, queen b3, I think in retrospect, you can see it is a choice here. It's in the opening book, but I think in retrospect it's better to play knight c3 first, pile up a little pressure on the d-pawn, and then go with queen b3. Um, with the idea that this bishop outside the pawn chain means that uh, this pawn is weak, and sometimes you get a, a double attack going against the uh, b7 pawn and the d5 pawn. Um, so that's kind of what you're playing for here. I went with queen b3 immediately, and he played b6. But it turns out that uh, best for black is to ignore that threat and play knight c6. And if I go ahead and grab the pawn, uh, play knight to b4. So this means that my queen is not going to have an easy route back into the game. The, the knight there is defended by the bishop. And uh, the uh, knight is also immediately threatening to come into uh, c2 here and fork my king and my rook or just win the rook outright. Um, so knight to a3 has to be played, defend the against knight c2, then black can play rook b8, chasing the king or queen around. I can grab a pawn here, and, um, well, the rook to a8. <laughs> the queen can be chased back and forth, or uh, he can also grab the pawn here. Um, the chess engine rates this as even, so uh, this is uh, maybe some kind of a drawing line for, uh, for uh, black. Anyway, uh, let's see, I went queen b3, and... Uh, he didn't play this knight c6 idea. He played uh, b6. And um, and after that, we're just out of the book. So let's uh, ignore the opening book here. Um, I went ahead and took. Uh, yeah, so let's, let's follow how the game went. And uh, he took with the queen. And so I got in uh, knight c3 with a tempo on the queen. And right here, he probably should take. The chess engine gives this his best. Although it still finds um, an edge for white here. Well, it seems like black gets his pieces out a little better than in the game. Um, there is a funny line here, I guess I wanted to show this, that um, uh, g4 can be played here. Not with the idea, normally, sometimes when you play g4, you have the idea of rook g1, 
I'm grabbing the uh, G pawn here, but in this case the idea is knight to e5 and um, say knight f6 developing and defending the bishop, bishop to g2. So white is sacrificed a pawn but has some nice pressure on this diagonal and uh, there's, uh, anyway, interesting stuff going on here. So that's, uh, that's one way to play that. Um, but he retrieved his queen and so I have a pretty big edge after this. I get an e4 against his uh, bishop, which drops back. And I probably uh, should go on to win this game pretty smoothly. But, uh, well, well, I guess uh, pretty soon we're going to start counting all of the missed chances. And uh, if you want to go back and look at the original and see if you can figure out the original video, see if you can figure out how many times I missed uh, winning moves. Uh, we'll, we'll start counting uh, pretty soon here. Uh, let's see. Uh, I went uh, bishop b5 check. This is uh, not bad. He blocked with the knight. Castled. Uh, he went a6, kicking my bishop. And I went bishop c6. So this is an interesting move, and, and uh, it turns out to be pretty good. He went rook b8. He's got to move his rook. And then, uh, okay, so this is my first uh, missed opportunity. So what do you think is the best move in this position? Okay, yeah, white's turn to move if you want to. Pause the video and think about it, you can. I'm going to give the answer away. It is uh, knight to e5. This is my first uh, first winning chance. Uh, you know, I'm piling up on this uh, knight here, which is pinned, and, um, you know, immediate, I'm immediately threatening to take it. He needs to defend it, and then uh, I can come and harass uh, this piece, too. So, actually, I'm just winning a piece here, so that is the simplest win. I was still focused on um, development here, I guess, because I continued with bishop f4. I was thinking about getting a rook to the c file here, ganging up on c2. I mean, there's still a good position, but uh, but the other move, knight e5, is simply winning, and you should definitely take those chances. Okay, uh, let's see. So after bishop f4, he went knight e7, kicking my bishop, and I had to decide what to do here. And so this is my second uh, missed opportunity. So uh, uh, what, what do you think the best line is here for white, if you want uh some time to think about it, go ahead and pause the video here. Okay, uh, the best line is to actually take that knight. It's not obvious right away why that's good, but after d5, which is what I played in the game, um, just without the trade, uh, I'm going to be opening up uh, lines against this king and queen while they're still in the center of the board and my rooks are free to come over. So this is actually a very strong attacking position for me. Uh, I went d5 immediately, and the problem with this is it allows black to live to fight another day. So that was my second missed chance. The thing is, after this exchange, um, I've got this good-looking pawn over here, but in a way it's kind of uh, in the way. I mean, I do have an open d-file to work with, but uh, his king, I haven't managed to open up any lines against this king, and this pawn is also blocking any pressure I might get along the c-file, so I'm, I'm really confined to... Uh, the d-file at this point. Um, let's see. He played knight to c5, hitting my queen. I dropped my queen back. So anyway, that was the second second missed chance. Uh, he went bishop d6 here. Um, the best move, according to the chess engine, is uh, queen to uh, d3. And I don't particularly want to trade, so I drop my queen back. And then he can grab a pawn. And after this trade, uh, let's see, I can bring my rook to d1 chases queen around. I'm down a pawn for the moment, but uh, he still hasn't castled, and I've got quite an active position. Looks like I'll be able to uh, plant that rook onto, um, onto uh, uh, d7 there, maybe double on the d file or triple. Uh, anyway, this is also a good position for, uh, for um, uh, white. I mean, white is generally better, but um, that was maybe uh, black's best way of playing. Uh, bishop to d6 runs into trouble, and I find the right move here. You want to pin that bishop. Let's see, he goes queen e7 to unpin, and I trade. Let's take back with the pawn. So now I have a passed pawn here on the c-file. Things are looking up for me again. And I play b4 here to kick the knight. This is the correct way to play this. Uh, he takes on e4. I take on e4, and then he plays uh, d5, <laughs> okay? And so this is the uh, my third missed opportunity here. What is the best way for white to continue? Now, I have to admit, this was a uh, complicated game. There's a lot of stuff going on here. 
and uh, my opponent was moving really fast. So I was actually, you know, thinking about these <laughs> these things, but I, I just did not have enough time between my opponent's fast moves and uh, the amount of time I had on the clock. I had to do all my thinking on my own time, and I just didn't didn't find these moves. But there is a nice sequence here uh, for white. So if you can find the best continuation at this point. Okay, uh, pause the video. I'm going to give the answer away now. I pause the video if you want time to think about it. I'm going to give the answer away. Uh, you start with pushing this pawn to c7. That uh, gains a tempo on the rook. So if he takes the knight, you get the rook with check. <laughs> so that's no good. So he has to block that pawn. Um, and you get a queen, actually, as well as uh, winning the rook and getting a check. Uh, so anyway, he blocks. And, uh, and then you can move the queen in with check. And what that means, since you can move the queen in with check, you can unpin this knight. And so that means that white is going to be a piece up after black responds to this check in some way. Uh, you can just uh, move the knight and you stay a whole piece up. So that was, uh, that was my third mischance. <laughs> Instead, I played knight f to d2 here. And, uh, you know, I, I had some of these same ideas he took. And, uh, and then I pushed on with c7 here. But it's uh, the move too late. I really should have played it. The move before he went rook c8. I went with the check. He blocked, and uh, I went ahead and grabbed this pawn. So I used this to mop up some queenside pawns, and I still keep some kind of edge, I think, here. Although, uh, let's see, if he had taken with the queen, that's probably the best way he can take here. I can play queen takes a6, and uh, I only have a I only have a slight edge in this position, so that would be uh, best play. And he took with the rook here. And um, let's see, I grabbed this pawn. Um, and then he played uh, queen to c6. Yeah, I, I can take that pawn because it's a tempo on the queen, so he has to move the queen. Um, so he went queen to c6, offering the queen trade again. And uh, okay, this is like my fourth missed opportunity. There's a really cool tactic uh, right here in this position. So uh, see if you can figure out this one. Pause the video if you want time to think about it. Yeah, so I actually thought about this move. I'm giving the answer away now, uh, which is queen to b8 check. And I said, well, he's just going to block. And then I don't have anything better but to move my queen away. And then I have to worry about this uh, lost knight here. So that was all the further I calculated. But, uh, but here's the cool tactic. I can actually just take that rook and then play knight d6 check and uh, get the queen. So that would be, uh, let's see, if he manages to win my knight, after I take the queen, I would have uh, two rooks against a rook and a bishop. Yeah, I would have the, uh, I would be the exchange up, um, and I would have a passed pawn over here on the uh, queen side. So that would be a winning edge too. So that's like my uh, fourth missed opportunity. <laughs> anyway, after this trade, uh, the game continues, and uh, and black isn't doing so bad all of a sudden because of all those missed chances. Uh, you know, you have to exploit those uh, your your lead in development when you've got the chance. You can't. Uh, you can't uh, just rest on your laurels because uh, eventually if you just keep playing and not, not finding the correct moves, uh, your opponent will catch up with you, and that's what's happened here. So now, now this is just a game. It's not like I have any, any advantage or not much of one. Um, I think maybe still a slight edge to white, but um, anyway, I went knight c5. My knight was hanging, and that uh, seems like a good square. He castled, bringing his other rook into the game, getting the king out of trouble. Um, I get my rook to the seventh rank. I think that's why I'm still slightly better. Maybe my pieces are a little bit better positioned. Played a5 to undermine the knight. And now let's just go forward. There weren't any big mistakes in this part of the game. We're both playing reasonable moves, uh, making lift for our king so there are no back rank threats. And then uh, this is a little bit of tricky maneuvering here to uh, hold on to my knight. Um, Let's see, bishop to d3 was not the most accurate move. Apparently rook to c2 is a way for uh, black to uh, um, stay active and uh, stay equal in the game. So bishop d3, not, not the most precise move here. And after uh, knight back to c5, hitting his bishop, um, let's see, he dropped his bishop back to f5. It seems like I'm getting getting some kind of edge here. Well, maybe not. We'll, we'll, we'll play on it. I have a note here that he still has a chance to have equality here on move 35. Uh, let's see. So he dropped his bishop back, played rook to e7. I'm playing to double my rooks on the 7th rank now. 
um, and he went and grabbed this pawn. Let's say I played rook to a8 check, forcing his king away. I could have grabbed this pawn right away. I probably was starting to, yeah, I think this is a point where I was really getting low on time and uh, just kind of trying to crank, crank out those moves in the four second increment. Um, so uh, these are not the most accurate moves here, but um, it still seems to have been okay. And uh, it was this next move, rook b to c4, doubled this way. Um, if he just played h5, uh, giving his king an extra square here, I think then he is still okay. Um, let's see, he went rook b to c4. I went ahead and grabbed on f7. He played king to g6, and that just uh, walks into this tactic with the knight. And this one I did spot. Um, I was lucky, though. He had actually given me some extra time, which is very nice of him. I guess he was interested in the game and seeing how it would work out. But this is really the uh, the final mistake. And after this um, king g6 move, there's really no chance for black. And, uh, and it seems I was able to find the rest of the moves okay. But, you know, I had a comfortable edge here and I was able to force a trade of rooks and push my pawns forward and get a passed pawn. There's one funny moment here where I actually had a mate in one, but I get the mate on the next move anyway. Oh, this typical strategy of just uh, pushing, pushing your pawns and your king forward together uh, right here after you played king h8. My uh, rook to the back rank would be mate. Uh, but I was just uh, pushing the pawn forward. This also threatens mate because the, between the queen and the king and the pawn, I'm covering, I'm covering three squares. So to avoid the mate at this point, he would have to give up the bishop. Um, yes, I don't think that would work. Uh, anyway, he played king g8, and finally I spotted the mate and ended the game uh, that way. So anyway, it was kind of a fun game. Hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, spotted some of those tactics, and I will see you again soon.